Well, good morning, everyone. Uh, Ken Ham of Anson Genesis Creation Museum in the Ark Encounter. We've got a treat for you this morning. Uh, we're going to discuss a very interesting topic, and for a particular reason, uh, but is heaven or hell uh, real? I mean, are they real places? Well, what's, what are we discussing that for this morning? Well, you're going to find out, and I'm in uh, Florence Baptist Church, actually, a beautiful auditorium, and this is where we're holding our Answers for Women conference next month in April, April 7 and 8. Uh, but to have here the pastor, the lead pastor of Florence Baptist, Corey Abney, and also we have Dr. Georgia Purdom, uh, whom many of you know already. Uh, Georgia and I do the Answers News every Monday and Thursday at 2.30. And also uh, Georgia is one of our speakers and researchers and writers, and she runs the Answers for Women Conference. But uh, Pastor Abney, the lead pastor here at Florence Baptist, you're going to be speaking at this conference on the topic now. I've got the program here. And uh, it says, do heaven and hell really exist? So I'd be interested to know, uh, what are you going to say? And uh, would you like to say something intelligent for all of our well, viewers here? <laughs> well, that's a lot of pressure. Uh, I'll save most of my intelligent speaking for the conference. But uh, Okay, that'd be good. Yeah, uh, I'm looking forward to it. And yeah, my topic is heaven and hell. Do they really exist? And if they do, what implications does that have for believers? Uh, my conviction is what we believe about the future largely determines how we live in the present. And we live in a, in a culture where even many uh, identifying Christians don't believe in a literal hell. And those who believe in a literal heaven often take their cues on what heaven is like from culture, books, and movies. Uh, there's and, been some of those recently. Yeah, near-death experiences more than the scriptures. And so I'm going to tackle all of that in my talk at the conference. So you're going to deal with these supposed near-death experiences or visits to heaven that people supposedly have had? Are you going to mention that in your, in your talk? I am. Yeah, I'm going to hit that head on. I'll talk about 90 minutes in heaven. I'll talk about uh, heaven is for real and some other near-death experiences that have been written about and, uh, and discussed in our culture. So it'll be very interesting. You know, if I put that on my Facebook, we'll get all these people going on yelling at me. <laughs> well, that won't be the only thing they're yelling at you about, but... Uh, uh, I have no doubt they'll yell at you about that. But they, there's also a lot of people that support that sort of thing too. But it, it's surprising yeah. when it comes to these sort of issues, how many people just use their opinions. Right. Uh, you know, I noticed that on my Facebook this morning. We just uh, put up uh, a, a review by one of our one of our really um, really great uh, staff members, Roger Patterson, who's very diligent and just loves the Lord and, and really knowledgeable in the scriptures. And he went and watched the Shack movie yeah. and did a review of that. And it's surprising the number of people that go on there and, and they claim you shouldn't have said this and that and whatever. But they don't use scripture. It's just their opinions. You know, We see a lot no, of that, right. don't we? No, we do. And, and in my talk, I'm not going to attack anyone's sincerity or their motive. Right. But I am going to address the fact that in our culture, we seem to elevate sincerity above the scriptures. And if someone is sincere, then we try to take them at face value and give them the freedom to express certain beliefs and convictions when what we should be doing is evaluating even our sincere observations or our sincere convictions uh, on the basis of the scriptures. That never changes. You know, that's such an important point for today because I just see this on the Internet so much. I see it in social media where people... Yeah, because they're, cause, oh, there's these really lovely people and they're sincere and you shouldn't say anything negative about them. And, and if we use the scripture to say, well, they're actually wrong in what they're saying, then suddenly we're called judgmental and intolerant. Have you noticed that? Right, absolutely. Yeah, but we've got to get back to defending the Bible as the sole source of authority in terms of faith and practice. And that's what I love about Dr. Purdom, about the conference that, that she hosts. Uh, we're going to focus on the scriptures and elevate the scriptures above all other things. Uh, and uh, Georgia, uh, you've run this Answers for Women conference now for a few years, and right. normally we have it at the Creation Museum, right. but we have to have it here at Florence <laughs> Baptist. Why? Because we outgrew uh, the Creation Museum. Uh, so we used to have it down in Legacy Hall, but last year we had nearly 700 women, and that means we're bumping shoulders a lot, and um, we want to make it the most pleasant experience possible, and so we're really glad that... Um, 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 Corey allowed us to come here and have the conference here because we have a lot of space and um, our vendors are um, we're gonna have more vendors this year because we're not gonna be so crowded so we can have that we've got plenty of nursing room uh, facilities where people can still watch the conference and um, nurse their children so it's just really gonna be a much better experience for everyone so we should just buy this 
church. And <laughs> <laughs> because I need halfway, something big. Ken. It's halfway between the. Yeah, well, you know what? It's, it's it's actually probably less expensive for us just to use it because mm -hmm. it's, it's in between the Ark and the Creation Museum. Right. Exactly. And that's what makes it really convenient. So if women come, uh, part of their admission, part of their registration cost gets them free admission to the Creation Museum and the Ark Encounter. And their families, if they come with them, receive a twenty percent discount uh, to both of those facilities as well. So. Now, what topic are you actually presenting? I'm going to be talking about the reality of Noah's Ark and Flood. That's a little different for you, isn't it? Because normally, um, aren't you talking on genetics and that right. and even? Yes, but you know, with the opening of the Ark Encounter, um, obviously we've seen a lot of people making fun of that and saying, you know, well, that's not real. It's a big myth. And, and it is something that, especially we see in a lot of the Sunday school literature, even in, within Christianity, we see how the Ark and Flood aren't treated as real. And they are. And we need to understand that um, in the larger context of the authority of God's word, that it is sufficient. Um, it's not based on our experience or um, what we think, but what does God's word say? And you know, that's what I appreciate about this church too, Corey, is that, um, you know, our emphasis in answers in Genesis, we, we certainly specialize in creation apologetics and some general mm -hmm. biblical apologetics and Christian worldview, but we've tried to really position this ministry as much more than just on about origins, uh, much more than just on about uh, Genesis. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, I, I spoke here uh, last Sunday, uh, Sunday morning, and really dealing with worldview issues and how to, de to defend uh, the Christian faith against the secular attacks of our day. We've really tried over the years to help people understand this is a biblical authority issue mm -hmm. because that's what has come under attack ever since Genesis 3, biblical authority. I mean, right. you know, God's word, in other words. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's what I appreciate about you and uh, what you do here at this church too, which is why we work so well together. Uh, and uh, that's why uh, we're thrilled to be able to use the facility and appreciate you letting us use that. Now, you also have uh, a different sort of women's conference coming up this weekend. For any of the locals in the area, yeah. uh, it'd be easy to get to. Could you tell us a bit about that? Yeah, absolutely. We have uh, a conference this upcoming Friday evening and Saturday morning and early afternoon called Enlighten. And the focus of that conference is on um, bringing women face-to-face -face with the scriptures and uh, with how the scriptures address some um, critical practical issues that moms and that women are facing in today's culture. So it's a smaller conference than what Answers in Genesis uh, typically does. It's a regional conference, but we're expecting a good turnout, and uh, we'd love to see anyone who's in the area. Yeah, in fact, I'd encourage uh, locals in this area to go to both conferences. And Absolutely. Because they're, they're both very different, mm -hmm. and they, they're really uh, designed uh, to, and focused to help women uh, in this culture, which right. is very, very important. And that's what culture. we want to do. I mean, that's why we started this conference in the first place was because I really saw a dearth of um, teaching apologetics for women and really getting into the meat of the word. That's one of the things, um, one of the co um, compliments we always get every year is I've never been to a women's conference where there's been more scripture talked about. I mean, they just, the other conferences, a lot of times, uh, just, you know, it's surface, it's more experiential, emotional. Yeah, there's a lot and of fluff and stuff out A lot there, of fluff and stuff. So, here too. That's right. right. We, we want to get into the meat of the word and, you know, just talking about some of the other topics that we're going to be um, addressing, uh, because I see these a lot in women's, uh, Christian women's resources and in Christian bookstores. When I walk through there, uh, one of the women we're going to have is uh, Marsha Montenegro, and she came out of um, sort of the, uh, she's going to be talking about a lot about Near Eastern mysticism, but she used to be in a uh, New Ager and used to be in that area, and um, she's going to be talking about things like holy yoga quote unquote um holy yoga yes I haven't yeah. tried that yet. No, I haven't. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'll keep away from it. Right. Things like mindfulness, contemplative prayer, and I've seen a lot of resources on that as I walk through Christian bookstores. And it sounds Christian on the surface, but she's going to help us discern what the problem is with a lot of those ideas and how they don't match up to God's word. Um, Bodie Hodge is going to be speaking, um, and so continue to pray for him because um, he's had some setbacks with his um, heart. But we we hope by April, early April, he will be here yeah. um, to talk about is the Bible true. We think he turned a corner in regard yes, to his health. Yes. So appreciate everyone praying mm -hmm. for Bodhi and I ask you to continue to pray for him. The Lord has preserved him. Right. I think for a particular yes. reason for, mm -hmm. to be with his family right. and to, yes. to be here for this ministry. Too. Yes, he's very important. So he's going to be talking about, um, you know, how do we defend the authority of God's word? Sort of what we call presuppositional apologetics, but very practical. He said, I want to make this practical so people can apply what they've learned. And that's a question that got a lot uh, from especially mom 
moms that have wayward children is how do I defend um, God's word effectively um, with my children? Uh, we're going to be talking about um, the sufficiency of scripture. Uh, so that's going to be Aaron Benzinger with the Bible. Who could ask for anything more? <laughs> uh, and so that's very important because it goes to this whole idea of my experience. And, well, God told me to do this. Well, you know, is that really biblical that God speaks to people like yeah, I that? I hear people a lot of times saying, well, God told me this and God told me that. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking, I've never had God speak to me like that. And Did God really, was it audible? What, I mean, what do they mm -hmm. mean when they, I mean, I can understand if you say God told me through the scriptures, because mm -hmm. that is his word and he's speaking through the scriptures. But I know what, Curry, what's your response to that? Uh, I get a little bit nervous. Um, <laughs> I've thought about setting Probably up a... nervous answering my question. Right? Uh, well, <laughs> we, we've got a, actually a burning bush out back that we keep here for people who are on our campus and seeking the Lord's will. Uh, no, I, I, I definitely get nervous when uh, pe people start appealing more to emotion or experience right. than they do the scriptures. Right. I, I teach our people here that 90, 95% of God's will for your life is contained within the scriptures. Right. And there are certainly decisions that we make in terms of who we marry and where we go to school and what we do for a living and that sort of thing. There are strategic decisions that we make, but if we live in the realm of the 90 to 95% mm -hmm. of God's will that is clearly in his word, right. then uh, I believe he'll guide us through the Holy Spirit that's indwelling in us to um, accomplish his will in those other areas. Well, this is a, a wonderful facility. We appreciate you allowing us to use this Absolutely. facility. And uh, again, uh, the ANSYS Women Conference is April 7 and 8. Right. And you can go, well, actually, you should be able to go to a uh, top comment there, and we should have pinned for you a link to the Answers for Women Conference. And then the conference that you have in Lighten, which is yes. this weekend, and particularly for regional people. And actually, if they want to have a two-course meal, they can <laughs> come to this conference and the next one, right? Yeah, that's yeah. right. They can come to both. That's right. And, yeah. we're, and we're promoting at our conference this weekend, the Andrew right. Genesis. Yes. Uh, I will be here. The FIM <laughs> conference uh, upcoming in April. So, yeah. So, I'll just ask our videographer here. I didn't ask originally if anyone wanted to ask any questions. But, hey, I'd like you to ask a really hard question of Corey Abney, <laughs> uh, the lead pastor here. Ask him a real deep theological question. I want to see if he can answer it okay, on great. the cuff, off the cuff here. Uh, but... Uh, we do have people from all over the world who watch our uh, Facebook Live, and of course a lot of them will watch it during the day. Some of them are at work now and they shouldn't be watching it, uh, and things like that. Uh, but uh, again, we appreciate uh, having this facility made available to us halfway th between the Ark and the Creation right. Museum, which is why it's really great. That's why we chose it. <laughs> and, you know, we just don't have all the room at right. the Creation Museum for such a big conference. Right, it's so it? spacious here. And, uh, <laughs> room for the mothers to mm -hmm. take their babies aside right. and mm -hmm. uh, all that sort of thing, and room for more vendors out right. there as well, mm -hmm. uh, which we uh, uh, appreciate so much. Uh, so what we're going to do is uh, probably uh, end this broadcast. We, we right. can't go on for millions of years. I don't believe in millions of years. Let me just, you let you me don't just believe in millions of years either, do you? No, of course not. Yeah, uh, and <laughs> wow, this is one of these churches that stands on God's Word. <laughs> right. Can't get a word in it. And, 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 okay. and I really like this. She's trying to talk. Did you know that? <laughs> yeah, All right, yeah. so. <laughs> Florence Baptist Mount Zion. Yeah, we're on Mount Zion Road. Oh, okay. But uh, our website's florencebaptist.org, so yes. So they can find out about the Enlightened Conference here. Yes, right. and then if you want to find out about the Answers for Women conference, you can go to AnswersForWomen.org or just go to the AnswersInGenesis.org website and you can find out more information on how to register there. So with that, anything more to say, Georgia? You've been trying to say something for ages. I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I always think that these things should be informal and fun and, you know, mm -hmm. uh, to uh, uh, just, um, well, have a great time. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. That's what we'll do at these conferences too. Okay. Hey, are men welcome at these conferences? No. Well, he is. Um, so we have a few male speakers, but that's it. The rest, it's for oh, women. It's for women. It's okay. for women. I think, I think the answer's for women. Okay. Kind of answers that question. We take it literally, not yeah. symbolically. Yeah. I think so. Not allegorically. Okay. All righty. So uh, look at the top comment there. You'll see the link pinned there. And uh, also you can find out about the Enlightened Confer Conference from uh, FlorenceBaptist.org and then AnswersForWomen.org. Uh, and we'll finish off this broadcast right here in this beautiful auditorium. <laughs>